Hello, hello. Welcome, welcome. Um, right now, it's a little bit of a solo act. I just, I'm, I'm like, I did not straighten that well at all. Um, hey, Miss Bella, how are you? Uh, Mark is having some technical issues. I mean, Mark, you know, he's getting it together. Um, but until then, how have you been? Like, it's been a hot minute because I was out for one week and then like, uh, life was way too busy that week. And then the next week I was a snot factory. I was spewing, I, I was spewing snot all the time. What my ratio of liquid to snot was not a good number. One sip, just a sip of water meant like three handfuls of, of snot. And that was, I mean, I was a Kleenex slayer, box of Kleenex slayer. I slayed them right, left and center. You know, Bella was number one tonight. Absolutely. Hello, Sue Bear. Good to see ya. Um, it's, it feels like it's been a while. I mean, it's been like two weeks, but it feels like it's been longer. It's weird. I don't know. Oh, oh, see now, now I don't know if Bella knows who Chili DeCastro is. She is probably blessed because of that to be unaware of him is, is a nice existence. I, I have to say, um, it, 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 is this cause I was a snot factory daytime? Is that why you're at you? I mean, valid. It was, it was an EO time. L. It was such an L time. Um, thankfully a man who will be turning 50 soon and decided <laughs> um, he has decided with his life that he is a game changer. He is on a mission. He is he thinks he is going to change the world. I am sorry to say what he wants to change. He will not change by the tactics he has shown so far. He, uh, and now he's in jail for six months and he's not getting out. But hey, I have not talked to Blue yet today. That is wonderful. That's wonderful. So I'm going to add now my friend who did figure out his technical stuff. How you doing, Mark? Judge Zimmerman, take me home to the place I belong. Clark County Jail, gangs and showers. Take me home, Judge Zimmerman. I, See you in six months, Julie. <laughs> what, what better entrance than that? Oh, my goodness. How you doing tonight, Mark? I am fantastic. I, you know, I, it is. I don't want to a little bit of pain this time. <laughs> <laughs> Yay, this is good. I am. I I had a sinus infection last week and my eyebrow still is very tender. Yeah. Um, and just so you know, if you hear yelling and barking, because I don't know how sensitive the mic is, that would be progeny with Coco trying to run out some extra energy outside, which is right there. So <laughs> well. Y'all can let me know if you can hear that, <laughs> which is, you know. I was about to say, I'm not going to comment. I'll, I I will get a slap. You know, she is, she's four months old now, over 25 pounds, and she is, she's a wrecker, wrecking ball, basically, because her back legs get going faster than her hind legs. She's kind of toddler-esque. <laughs> so... She just, when she gets going, 
she will either like just start tumbling and heaven help you if you're in her way or <laughs> we have a lot of tile floor because we live in you know southern arizona which means lots of satillo tile or some kind of tile because it's cool and you know especially during the summer um she's learning how to drift you know she's the front end and then the back end kind of you know they're they're fighting they're jockeying for position she hasn't figured it all out yet and if you are standing anywhere nearby it is a sweep the leg scenario you act you just absolutely <laughs> she sweeps the leg your leg she's fine she bounces up she's happy she's ready for the next thing and and i mean if you're klutz like me i am on the ground waiting for the forklift to pick me up it's just it, it's just not a pretty sight <laughs> But hey, she's doing great with training. She is, she's a smart, she is a smart pup. We have her on, like they have these doggy puzzles where you like put a little piece of kibble in and then you move a little thing over and you lock it in place and you, you know, do all these little things. Yeah. We have her on adult level puzzles that are supposed to be, take, they're supposed to take her time. Cause she's got it. She has to do multiple movements to get to the kibble. <laughs> she's got to flip the tail. She's got to move the thing. She's got to pull it up. She's got to, you know, she has yet to break two minutes. <laughs> and we're like, um, that was actually supposed to keep you occupied for just a little bit longer. So she gets a Scooby snack pretty, uh, pretty early on. She gets lots of Scooby snacks, lots of them. Hey, Lisa. So, yeah, that is, I'm a little scared because <laughs> yeah. at this age, if you don't keep them occupied mentally, like challenged, mm -hmm. then they go destructo. I'm, I'm the same, you know, if, if I'm not kept uh, challenged. Uh, this we know. I, I go full with blown destructive mood. <laughs> <laughs> Molly went to jump off the bed. Front legs hit the floor. Kept sliding before the back legs made it. Oh. Oh, ow. Poor pup. Look, I mean, look at that face. Look at look at that little face down there. How can I, you I, say no to Molly? I, I, I once got my dog um, when I still had had the dog. Um, I, I, I bought him uh, one of the um, you know, the uh, food bowls sort of Got all the little twists and turns in them. It's supposed to slow them down eating. Mm -hmm. Well, he figured out pretty quickly that if you just stood on the end of it and flipped upside so down, he could eat all food. <laughs> I mean, different routes, <laughs> different ways to get it. Um, I thread the glue to the floor. It's quite funny. There you go, Griff guy. I, I can imagine. I, from all the pictures that you've shown me of what all she has on and eaten, I can picture that. <laughs> <laughs> I miss my dog. Now I'm an underling for my cat. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Can I just say the cat still has not accepted said dog. Who is right here? Hello, the baby. Come here, the baby. Oh my goodness. Yes, you're so big. Oh my goodness. Hello. Hi. Hi. Can Good you Lord. Say hi? Hello, Coco. Oh my goodness. Ah, that's that, my that, finger. Okay. That fur ball is massive. It, 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 it was tiny last time I saw it. She is over 25 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> and not pleased with me trying to hold her still. I mean, come on. The audacity. Yeah. Jeez. Okay. Hello. <laughs> See, here's, oh my gosh, she keeps growing like you wouldn't believe. Yes. Can't leave any plastic where Molly can get it. Had a package of 20 multicolored pens. I think I have four left. Wow. And just so you know, if you hear a shriek, it's because Coco knows 
where Coco is supposed to be going. She knows. Does she decide sometimes? Mm. Nah. I am just going to, I, I, you're not paying enough attention to me, so here I go. Now you're going to pay some attention to me. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely she does that. And we are, we're, we're trying. We're, this is the, this is the fun part. And Lisa, she, she won't stop growing. She won't stop. She has figured out, well, first of all, like we kind of have an elevated bed because like with my back and health issues, um, like a lower bed, um, I just wouldn't be able to get up. So if I had the, the height of the bed where I can just kind of boop off, I'm good. Um, it was too high for her to jump off of, which kind of meant we could corral her for short times. Like I could be the one she could chill with. I'm the chill one. Except now she can jump off the bed. That is, that is, that, that is, I mean, it's like when the kid learns to walk, it just opens up the entire house to destruction and damage. Oh, Sue Bear, bite your tongue, bite your tongue. Oh, wait a minute. She chewed the top off a Pepsi can. I mean, she's just, she's just an, I, well, let's not make it her incinerator because that would, that would be bad. That would be bad. All right, folks. Are we ready to start a solve? So, oh, that looks really bad on, on the camera there. Let me, let me get my double chins. There you go. Can you see, can you see it all? This was actually my offspring and some of her friends <laughs> did the whole Scooby gang one year. I learned how to zoom in. Yeah. <laughs> um, that was, that was fun. That was, and that was actually her being Velma, I believe. Does Velma wear the orange shirt? I think she was Velma. Yes, was Velma. Uh, at least in most of the uh, Scooby-Doo themed uh, things that I've seen. I, I've oh. seen some where she's not wearing it. That eyebrow, man. That eyebrow. We're not going to be doing 17, 17 ones tonight because, <laughs> dang, eyebrow is still... It's like the sound of a cat horking up a hairball. You know that sound instantly. The sound of a dog vomiting, you know instantly. I, mm. that would be, that, that's one of those, like, you clench a little when it starts coming. I thought so. Yeah. Which was funny because, like, she hates the color and doesn't look good in it. But that's, that's what she was. All right, so we are back with murder, most puzzling, and I did murder, murder. Um, hey Mark, did you hear about Blue getting uh, the um, the motion approved for a thousand dollars from our friend? I didn't. I I was teaching today, so I didn't uh, didn't hear a lot. We're go. Oh yeah. It, a dog vomiting or a cat horking up a hairball. Same. I can be dead to the world. No, I'm wide awake. He's Absolutely. Gonna have to do a lot of shifts in the uh, in the jail kitchen. Yes, he will. <laughs> yes, he will. Um, I'm sure Bubba will help if uh, if he has some nice. I'm just I, so many things I could say that I'm not gonna. Uh, oh, it, it was said in the song, don't worry. <laughs> there you go. There you it was, go. It was very heavily implied. <laughs> All right, we're going to start tonight with <laughs> the funeral party because we put the fun in funeral now, don't we? Free Roy. Oh, my goodness. Um, yeah, All right. This for the price of one. <laughs> and barium. All right. Let's see. Oh, my gosh. I got to focus my eyes to read this. Because it's been a hot minute. All right. Mm -hmm. We're trying to keep this very quiet, explains Mr. Finley, the private secretary. This funeral is a big society event, and we won't want to besmirch it with a lot of negative press. Because funerals and negative press 
never go hand in hand. Isn't that right? A murder, do you say? Medea Thorne scans the opulent ballroom at a funeral. <laughs> Nothing like a funeral part. I mean, come on. We put the fun in funeral. Mr. Oh my gosh, the names. The names are going to end me. Mr. The it's scandal a of having a dead body at a funeral. Oh, especially when it's a Greek man. <laughs> Mr. Theodopolis? It's not that? Because there are more vowels in there, but we're going to go with Theodopolis because that I can pronounce. Um, his Mr. Funeral is Theodopolopolis. Oh. Um, it may be a lot more like a Pulas's, but that's, I just, the, we're going with Theodopolis. What, we don't know him. Um, his funeral is currently taking place. As you'll know, he was a man of great wealth, so we are expecting a large number of. He, he's, he's dead. We don't need to remember it for long. So. <laughs> He won't know. <laughs> uh, we're expecting a large number of very important people to attend this particularly lavish waste. L uh, sorry, lavish wake. I just <laughs> Sue Bear, your comment completely distracted me. Dang. <laughs> of course, the murder of a member of staff is a terrible tragedy. That's why we've called you to sort this out at once. No Quiet. comment on the nipples. <laughs> He quietly led the way into the ballroom where the body of a young man has been viciously stabbed in the back. All right. So cause of death, we know. Stabbing in the back. That's Phil Aphis, the cocktail designer. Oh, every good every good funeral is going to have a specialized cocktail, right? It reminds me of someone. Do I know this <laughs> someone? I think, I think we all do. Alrighty then. <laughs> um, where is the murder weapon? There isn't one that Secretary swells hard, unless that is the murder has secreted it on his person. The wound looks too mu much too big for that, Miss Thorne says firmly. Shouldn't you have informed the police? Mr. Theodopoulos had many close friends whom the presence of the law would make extremely uncomfortable. So he's a criminal? Is this what is, is this what you're getting? He's a mob boss. This is what I'm getting. Rude. Surely he should be Italian then. <laughs> Naturally, we will inform the police in due course. Until then, I'd rather not ne have a never murderer there. in our midst. You and Miss Thorne follow Finley across the ballroom, where he unlocks a side door and lets in a group of disgruntled people. This wake has been arranged according to Mr. Theodopoulos' express wishes and with the professional help of these people, each of them an expert in their field. Of course, nothing but the best. Statue on the left back looks us. Are Agreed. any of them an expert in um, uh, being a thespian? We'll, we'll find out. All right, so these are the six people at play. Albert Dandelion, florist, Beatrice Good, caterer, Cyril de Beaufort, room stylist, Diana D, candle consultant, and Enrico Malo, 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 because it sounds funkier, perfume. <laughs> Miss Thorne inspects them through their through narrowed eyes while nonchalantly helping herself to champagne at the cocktail bar. Well, at least we know he wasn't poisoned by the champagne now, don't we? I believe old Aphis would have wanted us to sample this excellent champagne, but yes, she says, we'll take it from here. Handing you a glass, she, mur she murmurs, ring Inspector Symes, will you tell him to come in plain clothes, explain exactly what happened, and inform him of whom to arrest. There are Greek mobs. Well, there are mobs like their mob bosses, like, and just probably. <laughs> I was just hearing about mob Chinese mob bosses in Oklahoma. I'm like, what? What? Apparently, well, I, was, they're... I was just thinking. Apparently, that the uh, police don't know how to do their jobs properly, so you've got to tell them who they've got to arrest. That too. Hey, Erica. <laughs> glad you made it. Hey, how are you doing? You are late. Where were you? 
You should have been here earlier. Listen, I'm not. I'm not going to be rude. Apparently, you're going to be rude, and I'm going to itch my nose. So uh, I'm. I'm absolutely going to be rude. <laughs> it's okay. It's crippled cat. She loves me. So there you go. <laughs> All right. So we are doing. We're we're looking to see if we can find any hints. Now, did you say one was a florist? One is a florist. You ever seen a million ways to die in the West? I haven't seen that. Oh. I know. I, I won't spoil it too much, but uh, there's a scene where uh, Liam Neeson gets hit across the head with a rock and has a flower stuck in his bottom. And uh, Oh my. I was just thinking, yeah, if it, I, well, I, somebody I, should check if there's a flower there. I don't, I don't see... I don't see one. However, <laughs> no, I don't. I don't actually see one. <laughs> but that would have made life interesting. All right. Now Daytona was saying that the statue on the left looks sus. Quite possibly. Whoops. Hello. So, how many? Um, was he really? How many guests were there? Five. Um. There Six. were. Five helpers. The guests haven't even arrived yet. All right. So Sue Bear brings up a good point. But one of them was drinking champagne. Um, Miss Thorne, and apparently, yep, Oleanders. I they haven't actually mentioned Oleanders at all. Um. Now apparently, we're just supposed to know that sort of thing, and uh, yeah. When I was like scanning some of these ones, um, one of them involved math that is more like at a higher level than what Progeny has has studied so far as a sixteen year old. I'm like, I'm not, I, no, I'm, I'm not doing that one. I don't care. I'm not doing it. All right. So we have. Wow, he's tall. Okay, so we have. He's Look the person dude. Come on. Come on, man. Oxford's not brogues. <laughs> we have the candle consultant because he doesn't need a candle consultant. We have the uh, room stylist. So he's just setting up the furniture. We have the caterer here. I mean, at least she's wearing gloves. Is she wearing gloves? I think she's wearing gloves. She may have just been picking her nose. We don't know. Um, and then we have the florist. He is the florist. I have not seen an actual flower sticking out of the dead man's bum. So I don't think it was, <laughs> you know. He kind of does look like Danny DeVito's penguin. He he's given me the vibes. He is he is definitely giving me the vibes. Um. All right. Well, the candles in the chandelier look lovely. How many uh, how many glasses are there? Oh, we're down to counting glasses. All right. I'm, I'm just I just see the glass in the foreground. I might I might as well start with the closest thing. We got seven or eight. Well, we got different ones of different flavors. I'm just I wondering mean, if he sampled one and uh, dropped dead. Stabbed in the back by something big. Um, actually, the cocktail designer is the dead person. Um, because Paul Aphis is the cocktail designer and he is the dead dude. Then he somebody the else didn't body. like the cocktail and uh. Quite possibly. Ooh, I think. I see. Have the, have the, the came from. Let's have a look at the other two statues. The statue came to life and stabbed him with a spear. That's that's a working theory. You, you never know. But uh, let's see the uh, the wider picture again of the whole room and the body. Now I think all, I all think of the uh, all of the statues have spears, but the uh, the one is broke has the tip broken off. Which one is broken off? Um. One of the three there at the top. The uh, the tip of the spear is broken off. I believe you are correct, sir. 
Yeah, I'm seeing tips on the other spears. All right, have we found our murder weapon? Then we just have to find the murderer. So... They could still have it on them. Robin Lord Taylor Penguin. All right. I'm bad about seeing modern movies here. Which one is that one from? Um, all right. Uh, what's he got in his hand? I think it's a handkerchief. Oh, Gotham. Oh, I actually, I, I enjoyed Gotham Knights. Maybe he went Kingsman and uh, yeah, did his impression of a, a German aristocrat. Quite possibly. It might the, be a little, the little blade in the shoe. <laughs> um, I, when I'm looking at the pages in person, I am not seeing what appears to be a broken off tip. Um, I know it does look pointy. I think in person, I think Sue Bear's right because it looks like there are three little fingers, like one, two, three. So Sue Bear may be right that it might be a glove or a hanky, something like that. Um, and I, I don't see anything in anybody's hands. Um, this, the, I'm pointing to the screen like you see how I'm pointing to the screen. Um, his hand got cut off a little bit, but it's just the, um, uh, it's just another hand. Why do you think the redhead did? Uh, do we have something against redhead, Sue Bear? Sue Bear. So why do you think it's the redhead? Oh, wait, there's two redheads. She has red hair too. The guy or the gal? Um, to be quite honest, they all look bloody weird. The eyes, huh? Well, it could have hidden a murder weapon somewhere in the environment, I suppose. Sue Bear is thinking it's it's this dude right here. Yeah, I ne never trust somebody who's that tall. Oh, tall, huh? And his, his eyes are too far apart. You don't even <laughs> see where his other eyeball is. <laughs> I know. Well, so right far then. away that you can't even find it. Are there bloody handprints <laughs> on the far pictures? Let's see. Oh, those are flowers in front. Oh my gosh. I was like, really? Are there? the um, <laughs> the Those are actually flowers. Yeah, grip kite. Uh, has a... Um, noticed, yeah. We... So, yep, I think the spear, the, the spear, no, how about the spear? Um, that's the murder weapon, the tip of this. Um, and you think because he's hiding a hand, it's him. That floor is far too shiny. You see up the lady's skirts, you can almost see the knees. What? This took a scandal turn. Of it. The scandal. The scandal. All right. I mean, scandal he, is totally bloody scandalous. He may have hidden <laughs> the spear tip down his pants or something. I mean, rude of me. Let me rephrase. Phrasing, phrasing. Um. <laughs> Did you do have cells? <laughs> I was a redhead. I, uh, I, I once dated a redhead girl, and, um, and she uh, she messaged me the one day. She was like, I've, I've dyed my hair. And I was like, well, were the paramedics able to revive it? And she said, shut up. And uh, then I said, um, well, what color have you dyed it? She said, strawberry blonde. I'm like, so you dyed it the same color that you are anyway. <laughs> No, I was ginger before. Now I'm strawberry blonde. I'm like, yeah, it's ginger. Uh, oh, okay. All right. I'm, I'm not sure whether she ha she had a soul or not, but. <laughs> well, it has now been scientifically proven they need a whole lot more anesthesia than us normies. 
Um, yes, and whatever South Park says. I mean, obviously. Um, so, you have cells. <laughs> so do we have any other comments about who we think the murderer could be out of these five? Sue Bear is thinking it's the it's the tall dude because of his eyes and he's hiding his hand, which could be. Any other thoughts? Mark, what do you think? Yes, I, I don't like the tall. The tall. Uh... You just, just cuz. Yeah. Okay. Evidence can go out the window. It's <laughs> Just he's guilty. He's guilty because you know it's. Uh, there it, are hints. It's there, April. <laughs> it's April, and I had a tuna sandwich. <laughs> well, That's then. Why he's guilty? <laughs> <laughs> what might the weapon be? One of the suspects was able to access it more than the others. There you go. I told you, taller. Never, never trust somebody who's that tall and has. A... <laughs> so, good Mark, honey. what is good honey? What are what what is good honey that that oh, Coco yeah. keeps talking you, about? You you missed a thing. I missed a thing. I miss many things. It it was one of my first streams. <laughs> oh yeah. And to this day, probably my most infamous. Make some notes. A, a certain sarcastic law student out. decided that he was going to get very drunk on honey flavored whiskey. Oh, how'd you like the honey flavored whiskey? It was good, honey. <laughs> I have tried it before, it was too sweet for me. And because... in fact, uh, CA wrote one of his first songs as a result of that stream. All righty uh, then. I kept toasting I everybody, it and it was a case of. I love you, but F you. Good, honey. Okay. All right. Apparently, I like things bitter because, you know, I have no heart. So there you go. Is that the stream where you wore the aviator goggles? Oh, no, no, no. That's a, that's a much later. Gotcha. All right. The sharp spear from one of the ice sculptures. Those were ice sculptures, ma'am. Oh, my goodness. Those are ice sculptures. Man. Well, yeah, then the murder weapons melted. The murderer broke off the tip and used it to stab the victim, the only person tall enough to reach the spear on that sculpture. I mean, it could be that he's got it in his hand and it's just melting. But he is the killer. Congratulations. Case told closed. You, told you he was too tall. <laughs> See? See? Tall people. I'm telling you. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, I mean, I think we worked our way well through that one. Let me find the next page. Oh my, there are some pictures that are wow. Wait, okay. We finally get the boobies. What? No, they're like they are they're interesting. <laughs> hey, y'all, I figured out like how to like not only scan and then find the picture that I scanned, because I'm boomer with tech. Um but I I actually figured out like how to rotate. I mean, oh my <laughs> gosh. Oh my gosh. All right. All right. This is called a haunting. Because of course. Everybody. Ghosts. I mean, why not? I love how this starts out. One dark and stormy night. Medea Thorne asks you to drive her to a leafy suburb and stop in front of a large decrepit mansion. In the ga gravel driveway beyond the gate, a tall and haughty man is talking to a pallid butler next to a pile of strange equipment. I told her, the butler saying gravely as you approach, I told her this would come to no good. All the signs were there, but she refused to heed them. He whips around and makes a little bow. Oh, good evening, Miss Thorpe. He greets you with a solemn nod before dabbing at his eyes. It does look like the Hunter Mansion from Disney. Medea Thorne, the other man exclaims. I thought you didn't believe in ghosts. Turning to you, he shakes your hand with a radiant smile. Augusta Trod, ghost hunter extraordinaire. As you introduce yourself, Miss Thorne questions the butler. 
Parker, is Miss Marengo all right? She wasn't at poker tonight, and it's something she doesn't miss. As she mentioned, strange happenings last time we spoke. Odd things going on here. Unexplained occurrences. What's going on? I'm afraid she isn't all right, Parker quips. For weeks, I urged her to get an exorcist in. Those dreadful noises every night. Ghosts, apparitions, ectoplasm in the laundry room. What, what stain fighter takes out ectoplasm? I mean, it's an issue. Well, she did call me in, Artron. Artron, Art what? The ghost hunter dude. Oh my goodness, he explained. But I'm afraid I arrived too late. Gilda Marengo is dead. Dum, dum, dum. Dead, Miss Thorn Blanches. How? Killed by a specter, Parker wails. A marble urn was dropped on her head by what must have been a poltergeist. When I found her hunched over, his voice fails, and shaking his head, he gathers his resolve. Where is she? Miss Thorne hurries toward the front door, and you follow close behind. In the green drawing room, Parker calls after you. I'm not staying here a moment later. I mean, all right. You'll have to stay and speak to the police, Artaud says, says sternly. But I've often encountered this sort of scenario. We'll call them with my findings as soon as I've conducted a full psychic investigation. Full psychic investigation? We need to call on the lady from uh, the Idaho TikTok thing. The struggle is real. Absolutely. Miss Thorne stops you on the front steps and instructs you quietly. I'll find Marengo. In the meantime, see if you can find any evidence of the so-called ghost. Our Todd might be a beautiful man, but he's a charlatan. I'm sure we'll prove the case of the hauntings and the motive and opportunity of the murder without any psychic equipment at all. Have you heard about the uh, TikTok psychic with the Idaho killings, Mark? No. Oh, my God. Oh my god. This right. I've got to you. While we study some of the pictures here, this is the upstairs. Oh, nice, nice face on the wall there. Yeah. So a woman in Texas who is a psychic and uses tarot cards to divine things decided mm -hmm. that a college professor in Moscow, Indiana, um uh Idaho where the college four college students were killed brutally decided a college professor had done it and decided that the college professor was in some sort of a like three-way relationship with like how taught she's a coded viewer um and at first the the college professor was like no here's proof that i was out of town couldn't have been me to which the TikTok psychic double down, triple down, quadruple down. Um, and yeah, Pat Glegg has definitely been covering the case because the college professor's um, legal expenses have been through the roof and he was trying to support, um, yeah. <laughs> um, was trying to support the college professor. I mean, even the police came out and said, let's go. Listen, it says cow. I'm from Wisconsin. What do you expect from me? Moscow. <laughs> Moscow. Moscow? Is that? Okay. Put the emphasis on the right syllable. Um, it, <laughs> she got a cease and desist. To which she, on TikTok, said, I'm going to use this for toilet paper. And then decided to go pro se. And said More that wrong. he... She was a spiritual witness, to which the judge said, You're a loony. Actually, no, we need evidence. And then it was, well, you're disparaging my religion. No, you are free to have, practice whatever religion you want, but in a court of law, we need, we need actual evidence. Does say a lot to Shay. How you do? Um, and it has. I, I I'm. I'm not. I, I'm sure this won't be a spoiler for you, Mark. 
she is not succeeding well at all. <laughs> da, at da, all. Da, da. Color me surprised. I wonder why. Shocked Pikachu face. But yeah, it is just. Oh. All right, so this is the. They can't see me right now, but I'm I'm doing the shock Pikachu face. And <laughs> <laughs> so this is the upstairs. It does look a little spooky. It did. I I will say absolutely it looks a little spooky. Nice, nice snake. Um. Oh, this is okay. And the downstairs. See these? I had to rotate. I figured out how to rotate. And I I did check that nothing important was being covered up by the banner that says. Live from StreamYard because I am way too cheap to buy, like, professional. Um, <laughs> you, you don't actually have to have the banner on there. I do if it's a freebie, I think. No. No? All right. Oh, wait. Oh, oh. If you, if you go into overlays, you can... Uh... I mean, you can't get rid of the uh, Powered by StreamYard logo in the top right-hand side, but the the rest of them you can. <gasps> Ta-da! Oh, my goodness. Um, Your certificate for graduating the Mark of Sarcastic Law Student School of Tech is in the post. There you go. Yes, <laughs> that does appear to be a dead raven. Or perhaps crow. Dead bird. That the crow was murdered. It's a murder of crows. Mm -hmm. And the crows move. It's both. And here come the police. <laughs> they found me out. Darn it. All right. So, so how, how was this person killed again? I can't remember. Um, Supposedly sitting in the chair and something dropped on her head. Um, dang. Something's having fun tonight. Okay, so um, I'm, I'm going to presume it's maybe the chair. A marble urn was dropped on her head. A marble urn. Not a marble head. I don't know. So, do we see anything like food? I mean, yes, there are weird things. I mean, there's I mean, a, there's, there's a, a goat. A, I, there is a goat. <laughs> what? I think that's the chair that she was sitting in. Sue Bear, so yes, the chairs tip back, and I'm I'm guessing that's the chair she was sitting in. Why is there a goat there? I mean, I don't do... know, but we need to speak to these people about moving the body before the police get there. Well, there's that too. Um, all right, this is the upstairs. There's a swordfish in the fireplace. She tripped over the... the snake. Is this a normal thing to have? That snake is huge. Look at that thing. It's huge. That's what she said. I just open the door. I just open the door, let you, you saunter right through. You, you open the door, and I'm just like, I'm not. No. There was I'm not a resisting that. On the chair. There are lots of jokes that have been made in the community about using a pineapple in a specific manner that <laughs> I'm not going to. I, I won't say those right now, but. Put a one in the chat if you know what I'm talking about. No, you don't need to do that. You seriously don't need to do that. It could be Voldemort, Lisa. It actually, I mean, it could. Um, about the cadaver. <laughs> the ceiling is cracked. There's schmutz on the walls. This house is not in good shape. It is It is definitely decrepit. Um, yes. And there's swordfish in the fireplace. Are we... <laughs> See, I haven't played June's Journey. Um, okay. I mean, you know, there are a lot of musical instruments. I want to know what that doll is doing on the floor. I mean, that's just creepy. That that wall, I think that's ectoplasm there. Yeah. I've um, seen that way yeah, too the, many. <laughs> there's a doll on the ground. There, there are all sorts of doll heads. <gasps> I mean, okay. Not spooky at all. Oh, look, mm -hmm. and that's like a, is that one of those Goliath beetles? The whole house is indeed creepy. Do we see any clues up here? By the way, I went to the optometrist. He's like, no, your eyes are fine. 
except I bet when you're on the computer. And I'm like, what do you mean? I don't know what you're talking about. So yeah, I get to get computer glasses so that I'm not. I can't see. Someone, someone could have been looking for something, Griff Guy. Absolutely. Looks a little pilfered. Even like, um, is, this, is this supposed to be like a wedding photo? Because uh, that looks weird. Look on the left-hand side above the bed. What do you notice? <gasps> Chat, what do we see? And uh, if we go back to the first picture, there's a wrapped up, a wrapped up package that's shaped roughly like that. See there on the right hand side by the uh... mark. Looky there. That looks psychic. It's not, it's not like in a box like everything else is. Mm -hmm. And it does appear whoop, to be about the same shape. Did Mark get this one? I mean, I, I like I like Touche's version. Scarlet did in the kitchen with a candlestick. That I that I like. Did Mark get the haunting right? Let's see. Let's see what the clue is just for giggles. Lots of red herrings, but it's just a matter of proving the motive. Check in the bedroom. That's the bedroom. He is showing off, Lisa. He got caught in the act. What a show off. <laughs> I mean, come on. From his luggage, we can see that Parker is planning to take a painting with him, missing from the bedroom wall. We can safely assume that purloining this valuable item was his motive for killing Miss Morango. He might have staged the ghostly effects to muddy the evidence and explain his own rapid departure. Jarley. I haven't seen a stage, wait a minute. No, I'm thinking of Noises Off. I love that show. Um, have I seen Clue stage show? I let, the movie is funny. I mean, with the... Uh, um, I knew I should have been a detective. See? See? <laughs> I mean, that's the, you got that pretty quick. I mean, I'm not going <laughs> to not gonna lie. From three pages, you put it all together. <laughs> um, all right, do you, do you guys want to do one more since Mark just blew through that one? I mean, um, well, let's try, Curry, I'll try and go easy on the next one. The <laughs> Tim Curry one is amazing, Cripple Cat. That, that's what <laughs> I was thinking about. We've lost so many of those actors. I love, I love Tim too. Curry. He's funny. Oh, my gosh. I was sound for, for Noises Off. It was a college production. That was fun and terrifying. Uh, but, yes. I was once in Joseph. And that was about it. You can't be blue's clues. I'm sorry. Sorry, Mark. Do you have a notebook, though? Notebook, notebook. Oh, I don't even know. Like, that has been like years since I actually watched. Um, like Blue's Clues, I, I want to say Progeny was like Wicked Young when that first came out. Um, or no, sorry, not Wicked Young. She was like on the cusp of being too old for that. Um, all right, should we do like one more? That, yeah, why not? All right, let me, let me. Like, I'm like remembering how to like add the present slides. I have them like. It did, Go, I think. Okay. All right. Your handy dandy notebook. There you go. I don't think I've seen Redwall, but his voice is amazing. Absolutely amazing. <laughs> I mean, fishnet. It's it's just it's a strong man to pull out. I think he has like ALS or Parkinson's now, so he's um, uses a wheelchair, like power wheelchair to get around. He has very little strength left, which is sad. Um, but man, if you can keep your sense of humor through it all. All right. Poisoned patisserie. It is MS, yeah. Blimey, they look um, <coughs> happy, don't they? 
Hmm? They look happy, don't they? They look thrilled, which is exactly how you want someone who is making something for you to eat. That's how you want them to look. Thrilled with life. Sounds fabulous. It's not long past noon when you arrive at the pastry shop. Clemency Burnside. Whose name? Really? <laughs> Clemency? It's Clemency. Do you know many Clemencies? Well, not personally, but... Do you know of them? Okay. <laughs> Clemency Burnside, patisserie by trade, has been found dead on the floor. Her three underlings... Oh, see, I see Clemency with an alien. Whoopsie. Um, her three underlings greet you in a state of shock and introduce themselves as Miss, Miss Ash, Miss Brooks, and Miss Carter. They haven't shut the, um, they haven't called the police, afraid the shop would be closed down. We had a stroke too. Wow. He, he's had some health stuff, man. Mm. Um, the owner can always hire a new head baker, but the shop won't survive the scandal. We'll be out on the street. Oh, I know, says Medea for shrugging. Some people enjoy a bit of scandal with their morning croissant. But seeing as we're here, what exactly happened? Whoops. Sue Bear. And she, she's a redhead as well. Just say. Listen. Enough with the My word. She <laughs> is. Middle one has white shoes. She has her hands behind her back. Y'all are like, you are picking the stuff up, man. Wow. Wow. Yes, her, her body language is very suspicious. It It is a little sus. It is a little sad. I mean, it could be a red-headed herring. So, um, I mean, a, yeah, you know what I mean. Love the bet she dyes her hair. I mean, <laughs> I'm not going to, you know. We'll see. Convulsions she had, Brooks tells you. It was horrible. She choked and sort of gurgled and collapsed. Grinning she was, which, which we'd never seen her do. Before we knew what was happening, she was dead. All right, Mark. What's the name of the condition when you grin as you die? I don't remember. Don't remember. <laughs> is it Rissus Sar Sar Sardonicus? I think Sardonicus is right, but Rissus? Rissus? I don't remember. It's, I'm sure it's going to be a poisoning. Um, oh, yeah. Typical of tetanus or strychnine poisoning. The smile of death, right, Sue Bear? Do you know what she's been eating? The women shake their heads. We've always had sort of late breakfast together at 11, says Miss Carter. We all ate the same thing. She might have had something at home. It's unlikely, though, as she's usually on a diet, says Miss Ash. She's always talking about how little she eats, but keeps sampling our cake icing all the time. Did James make it? I don't even There's James! I mean, nice of you to rot. What? And it, the thing jumped. Hello, James. How you do? It is. The, we, there are so many, though. I, I, are we keeping track? <laughs> there, there are so many. Hey, James. All right. Um, it's uh, the cake icing. All right. Oh, Miss Orange shoots you a look. Have any of the cakes been sold? Not yet. The women explain that the cakes are meant to go out for delivery. Miss Thorne asked the women about each of the cakes and about themselves in excruciating detail, getting you to note it all down. Eventually, she asked them to make a round of sandwiches, coffee, and fresh eclairs. Do not eat or drink anything they give you, she instructs you. I'm just off to ring inspector signs. Keep an eye on them, particularly the, per the perpetrator. Because, of course, so whom will you need to keep to particularly keep an eye on? So, Geraldine Ash. Her skin tone seems spot on. Paused to her dream to work in a to work in food. Excuse me. Let me try that one time. One more time. Geraldine Ash pursued her dream to work in food despite a citrus allergy. We'll miss in the middle here. Ermine, Aramina. These names are killing me. Aramina Brooks. Has a severe dairy intolerance, but loves pastries. And Sibel Carter, the most skilled, trained in Paris, and does all the fancy piping. 
All right, did everybody get the dessert already? Because this may make you hungry. So what we have, top left, dairy-free vanilla velvet cake. Bottom left, almond with orange cream cake. So we got, well, dairy-free means anybody could. Orange cream cake would mean the one with the citrus allergy couldn't. This one is meringue cake with just a hint of lime, which is also citrus. Vanilla rainbow cake. And then we got a bitter chocolate, bitter coffee and chocolate cake with dark fudge frosting. Lavender delight. One for the connoisseurs. Are you a connoisseur? Ma? Are you a connoisseur? I, I, I couldn't tell you why I just eat them. Lavender is an interesting flavor to eat. I, I will say that. White chocolate buttercream dream, our bestseller. Low fat lemon surprise made without butter. And finally, down here is the raspberry meringue cake. Um, Touche says strychnine tastes like almonds. I think it's a bitter mm -hmm. poison, too. Um, highly characteristic abnormal sustained spasm. There's, yeah. Do you, like, like lavender teas? Maybe. Do you like, like, lavender cupcakes? Because I'm, it, if I'm in the mood, it's wonderful. If I am not, I feel like I'm just like someone has like shoved my face into lavender perfume and I'm not a happy camper. I love the smell of it. I just don't always want to eat it, but that's just me. Don't make me feel bad. Um, it smells like almonds. It doesn't taste like almonds though. Listen, I overthink things quite a lot. Okay, Daytona's a fan. She's a fan. This is this is good to know. I think if we hive mind it, we could absolutely be dangerous. Absolutely. I can either confirm or deny whether I have already done so. I. I don't know what to do with that. Good guy, help me. <laughs> I, it was a, I with the painting above the bed. <laughs> I mean, lavender tea can be good. If, you know, man, my nose know, is itchy tonight. Um, does that mean I'm telling lies? Is that what that means? I don't even know. Um, I, you know, there are. <laughs> um it's probably a good thing <laughs> i yeah um i believe there was a scientific study that the smell of lavender like back in the day my i know my grandmother would have a lavender wash for her hair after she um after she washed her hair she'd kind of put like you know, lavender scent in it. Um, not to like weigh it down or anything like that, just a nice scent. It was, I believe, scientifically proven that the scent of lavender has a very particular response in the male body. Mm -hmm. It's not a purple pill. It's a blue pill. That does that now. So, <laughs> I mean, you know, I bet the men are happy and their wives are smiling. So, <laughs> um, yeah, there's, wow, we've gotten far afield. Okay, we. <laughs> squirrel. <laughs> squirrel. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right. Do we have thoughts on which of these lovely ladies either um did something accidentally or on purpose 
Um, see, I mean, okay. So it is, it, it and, it, and it does help. It relaxes the, <laughs> relaxes the women and does something else to the men. Okay. All right. So, Sue Bear, why do you think it is the middle one? Um, Wow, a lavender still like, like getting the like distilling it down. Wow, that concentrate. I mean, because just a little bit of lint of um, lavender can can be enough to send my poor my poor fam that are bothered by strong scents a little bit can just send them over the edge. Um, she looks nervous, like she's done something. Okay, valid. Um, so, um, which, which one was the almond one? Um, the, the, which one? The, the almond one. We have a citrus allergy. We have a dairy intelligent, dairy intolerance, and we have a piper. How, look, the one on the right, Daytona says is, is the one on the right. Um, it was an accident. What the accident is that her feet are pointed the wrong way. That what? Ow! That just okay. The one on the left is a little pigeon toed. We're just having all kinds of issues. Um, so, so which which was the cake with the almonds in it? That was, uh... All right, we have. We have almond? Yeah, the almond and orange cream. Almond and orange cream. There you go. So, what are you thinking? <laughs> Left one, she looks sus. <laughs> Scrapple cat, I love you. <laughs> she looks sus, man. Um, so, we think it was the almond and orange cake, or is there a different cake that we think? Which one was a dairy free woman? Uh, was that the first one? It was dairy free. Dairy free is the one in the middle. Dairy free is the redhead. So she wouldn't have liked the cream cake then. Um, she would not. Let's see. I mean, if it's got cream in it, I mean, she wouldn't be able to have a. Probably. I think you're probably right. I mean, a lot of. Um... I'm I'm gonna hazard a guess. Say it was the uh, the almond and cream cake, and it was the one on. It was the blonde one on the left. Um, all right, so blonde on the left with the citrus allergy. So wait, if she had a citrus allergy, then she couldn't make that cake because it's an orange cream. The one on the right is the, quite possibly. I mean, she was looking sus. Um, I mean, it could be the one on the right. But I mean, she does a lot of the. Uh... I, I mean, you've already got someone saying, yeah, Mark is right. Um, we don't know how severe the allergy is. That is true. I, 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 I don't, yeah, I, I don't. Um, I don't know anything. That, about cakes, apart from the fact that I like what? to eat them. What? No, that's yes. not literally about as, as close as I, as I get to murder by um by cream cake. So this is this is the hint is very helpful. Are you ready? Are you all sitting down? You need to sit down because this hint is very helpful. No, it's going to be one of those. Ones. Take into account the manner of death and the suspect's various allergies. No kidding. Good Lord. He does kind of. He does kind <laughs> of. Yes. Um, Just a few F words. <laughs> almonds, yeah, and and apple seeds, but you'd have to like eat a huge amount of apple seeds to actually die from the cyanide in them. Or, no, cyanide, apple seeds have cyanide in them. 
but you'd have to like eat like five pounds of meat or something like that. Super. Darling. We always like, to, oh, we have a request from James. Can you say it's raw? It's raw! <laughs> It's raw, you moron. <laughs> You're an idiot sandwich. What are you? Oh my gosh. Did that actually happen? It's like, that is like such a meme. I, I have no idea. But I, it's, oh my <laughs> gosh. If it did, that is just, that's just rude. I, I don't even right? have my bleep button on here. <laughs> 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 it was. It was. Absolutely. Um, it really did happen. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, I, I guarantee it. somebody's going to clip that. It's going it's to be a great, sound bite by this time tomorrow. He is a great sport. Absolutely. It's, it's going to be on a Discord soundboard. I'm sure it wouldn't be coming from me anytime soon. I, I did have I did have a minor Tourette's moment the other day. Oh no! That, that ended up on the same board. <laughs> James, James, did you clip it? <laughs> All so, right. So the, the one on the right is the only one that could make that cake. So it, the, the one on the right, right is the one that does the fancy piping. I'm not going to lie. Like, basically, Lavender Light is the only one without, well, and the Vanilla Rainbow Cake. No, that's got piping along the top. Almond and Orange Cake doesn't really have piping because mm -hmm. it's got, like, a flat top. Um, But, like, even the Vanilla Rainbow Cake has little piping on the top. I'm going to say that's not piping because that the the lavender cake to me doesn't look like piping. Everything else has piping. So she had her hands on everything. What cake do we think killed the owner? Hmm. Do we think it was like we can if it was one of the citrus ones? The citrus mask a bitter or almond taste it could mask an almond taste i always thought strychnine was a bitter taste who, who wants to do a little almond you see you think almond huh They're thinking something different. All right. Here's a suggestion. Cripple I mean, ed almond. Almond. <laughs> almond. Um, all right. So, um, check on the left on the cake. <laughs> so check on the left, man. Um, all right. Suggest lemon, maybe. Lavender has a strong taste. Absolutely. Lavender can be a very strong taste. Um, all right, because I have cheated and looked as I'm scratching my nose again. Um, let's play a little Sesame Street. Which one of these things is not like the other? Um, for the cakes. Is there one that's a little different flavor profile, maybe? We got raspberry meringue cake, low fat lemon surprise, white chocolate buttercream dream, Lavender Delight, Bitter Coffee and Chocolate with Dark Fudge Frosting, 
almond and orange cream cake, meringue cake, vanilla rainbow cake, and dairy-free vanilla. Griffkai says the chocolate one. Purple Cat says lavender. Interesting. What do you think, Mark? Hmm. Daytona is just, she just jumped out of your boat entirely. She's lost complete faith in you. <laughs> <laughs> Sue Bear's thinking it's the, rainbow is not, it, it indeed is not a flavor. I think it's the vanilla part. <laughs> Probably. Probably Mark would say the raw one. <laughs> <Hit. Roar. laughs> um, I would have to say it's uh, so raw that the paramedics can still revive it. So Cripple Cat's not leaving the almond cake. She is absolutely mm. with the almond cake. So if it is the almond cake. Then we know that it can't be the one on the left with the with the citrus allergy. That was the one on the left had the citrus allergy. Yeah, she has the citrus allergy. One in the middle has the dairy intoler intolerance. I mean, seriously. Um, she she couldn't. Oh. Um, and then the one on the right does the fancy piping. Because it was a um. Almond and cream one, wasn't it? So if we do almond and orange cake as the murder weapon, then it would be the one in the mi the middle because there's no fancy piping on it. Did my cursor just get really big? Oh, <gasps> dude. Um, and so no <laughs> fancy know, piping, but then it would, it would be the one in the middle. Hmm. Are you an idiot in a cage, moron on the loose? Is that another Ramsey quote? I don't even know. I don't even know. <laughs> so, all right. So, if it's almond cake, then it has to be the one in the middle. I was seeing other folks saying the bitter chocolate. Bitter coffee and chocolate cake with dark fudge frost. There's no citrus in it. <laughs> Another ginger killer. Um, there's no citrus in it, so it couldn't. It it could be her. Uh, I'm gonna guess that there is dairy in it, though, right? Would do you think? Because yeah, I mean, yeah, theoretically, I mean, you're but it does you only have, have a, an intolerance have, to eating it. But. <laughs> it does have fancy piping. So actually, I, it could be any of them, maybe. Could it be any of them? And I apologize if you're hearing Discord going off, because apparently I didn't shut that up quickly. Mm -hmm. See, now, see. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean she's already got her hands behind her back, so apparently it's a very she's getting severe, ready perhaps. Severe. She would get tummy troubles, poor thing. Poor muffin. Um all right, so Griff Griff Kai's going with the middle one now. Um I mean she does look suspicious and she's a redhead. Dang, we're learning something about each other now, aren't we? Aren't we? Um, <laughs> all right, now James is saying chocolate now, too. Um, I don't think people are just putting out random. <laughs> James could be blurting out random things. He often does. And in other people's chats, he does it to try to get me in trouble, which is not a far step to go, I will be honest. <laughs> But he certainly helps a lot. So Daytona is still with the blonde. Do, 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 you know, um, do you know what my vote is? Hmm. Call the police and leave it to them. Obviously. 
don't eat anything until you can be sure. Get get forensics to have a look at it. <laughs> I'm Gordon gonna. Ramsey. I'm gonna bet based on those shoes. There's not forensics really quite yet. <laughs> <laughs> call the old bill. <laughs> Someone call the furs. No, you guys, we're Scooby Doo gang. It, they would have gotten away for it if it weren't for that meddling gang. That's you know. All right, They're so great or good. I am gonna kind of go. I don't know if they got the answer right on this one. Because I'm liking how you're all breaking this stuff down. They did not break it down. She's ginger and tall. Oh my goodness. She just checks all the boxes, Cripple Cat. How dare she even do this? <laughs> She's ginger and tall and doesn't is not wearing anywhere near appropriate footwear for that sort of environment. Audacity. All right. So this is <laughs> footwear. <laughs> this is how they have broken it down. Um, dairy free vanilla velvet cake, any of them could have made it. The meringue cake, with just a hint of lime, has fancy piping, so that leans toward the gal on the right. Vanilla rainbow cake, any of them. I mean, all right, lavender delight. One for the connoisseurs, any of them. Mm. There's nothing there that would... All right. I don't, I don't like ones that any of them could make. Um, listen. Listen, the piping. It's all about the piping. Laying pipe. No, I said the piping. I was very clear on that one. White chocolate buttercream dream could be Ash or Carter. Ash or Carter, that's... I'm just thinking of bagpipes. Stop. Um, Low-fat lemon surprise made without butter could be Brooks or Carter because of the citrus. Raspberry meringue has to be Carter because of the fancy piping. Bitter chocolate, bitter coffee and chocolate cake with dark fudge frosting, which I'm going to be honest, that is what I would face plant into first thing. Bitter coffee and chocolate, mwah. and that's, I mean, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Oh, Danny boy. Um, so, but personally, I would go after that bitter chocolate and coffee. And then the almond and orange cream cake, they're saying only Carter could make because citrus and dairy. So Carter's the piper. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that, that was they my favorite. Say, they say strychnine is a bitter poison. So it must be in the chocolate cake, which would mask the flavor. I'm not quite sure mm. that they fully fleshed that one out as much as they fleshed out some of the others. Yeah. I mean, every single case can't be a winner, right? I mean... Because y'all had some very valid points, is what I'm thinking. Especially like, I don't know. That's okay. That's starting to freak me out when the thing does that. All right. So uh, basically, Judy's dead. Yes, I would absolutely be the first one to die because I would absolutely face plant right into that bitter chocolate cake. Because like the the um, nitro brew at Starbucks. Just a little bit of sweet cream in there, and I am so very happy. And the, I, I mean, I've lived a, oops, hello, I, I, I've lived a good life. I am, I'm good to go, no problems. There. So, okay, so I'll have company. Um, oh, sorry. Um, now I'm, my my mod is distracting me now. <laughs> with pictures apparently of Molly. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Dogs with squeaky balls. Just um Coco is actually already trying to figure out how to do two things how to put two things in her mouth at once. She has the most adorable <clears throat> little underbite. 
So her <laughs> mouth is smaller than it should be anyway. It makes it worse that that was a better dog. She absolutely wants to like like tennis balls the best. Um, we have like a um, played against sports around here, which is you, know, you can give um, you can sell them your used sports equipment and get like 10 cents on the dollar. But at least it's 10 cents and it's not, you know, it's not cluttering up your closet anymore. In the words of Sethel, this stream is such a bad influence. Quite possibly. <laughs> <laughs> but it also tends to be drama free. So this is, you know, it's you got you got to have trade off. There's trade off somewhere. Mm -hmm. So we're probably going to be going to play it again sports to buy the bucket of tennis balls which will not be any good for tennis, Bowls. pickleball, whatever. Bowls. And, um, but we have like a, a tennis ball launcher, like a gun that has like a big strong rubber band. And mm -hmm. she can't decide what she likes to attack more, it, the tennis ball or the gun. I mean, it's, you know, um, Basil would only do that like once he like, pierced the ball and started pulling it apart then he would shred it but if it was still if it was still a ball <laughs> not a not non-ball <laughs> um then he would yeah. oh it is definitely a tennis pew pew and it is amazing i mean it ratchets back it's it it's full sensory it is wonderful it is fun Coyote Shepherd. Yeah. We are, um, Coco's a chocolate lab. So that's a Labrador retriever. We don't have birds, which is probably a good thing. Um, but we do have two guinea pigs. And Coco is still trying to decide if they are prey or not. And we had Basil, the golden retriever. By the time Offspring got the guinea pigs, he knew, like, he could see how the attachment that the two of them had. And mm -hmm. right now, um, Coco's still trying to decide if they are, like, she is she going to be jealous over them or is she just going to eat them? <laughs> and well, I, I mean, I'm, I'm really slightly biased good. because, uh, of course, I had a rather awful experience with the guinea pig. What happened with you and a guinea pig? Turns out they have very big bladders. Yes, they do. And uh, Yes, they do. That's right, you told me about that. Yeah, yeah. Oh it, it, was, it was being a parrot and then it was uh, doing something else. So um, I, I had to walk around by uh, at my my girlfriend's house with uh, with my top off as it went into the wash. Yes, he did, sweet girl. Absolutely. <laughs> yes, he did. Um, well, I, I I think it's better being pissed on than being pissed off. So, um, so let's dra let's drama that way. As you can probably notice. That's going to get taken I am a phrasing. Um, I am a <laughs> well endowed woman, shall we say, that when the guinea pigs are cold in the morning, because the desert gets cold at night, we don't have a lot of like vegetation or water to hold in the heat. So the heat just goes, whatever heat comes during the day, it goes at night. And the, the nights can get cold. So if they're cold in the morning, all they need to do is just kind of, and that it's nice and nice and toasty. I had <laughs> to stop doing that because one in particular, name is Rose, Rosebud, Rose Bear, jarling, talkative, <laughs> loving guinea pig, would say, "Okay, I'm warm now. Let me pee every <laughs> single time." <laughs> A shower is, I'm sure, very annoying. The bosom. The bosom <laughs> is not where you want a golden shower. 
at all. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad I'm not the only one. Oh my gosh. I can't tell you how many, how many times I just, I, 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 I had to put it, I had to tell offspring, you got to figure out a different way to warm them up because <laughs> the garage is closed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It just, it is what it is. I mean, this is my life. <laughs> we have very strange conversations in this house. <laughs> and then, and then the, the other guinea pig, whose name is Fudge, because she is all kinds of wonderful browns and, you know, caramels and stuff like this. Smart guinea pig. Too smart. <laughs> when a rodent is too smart, there's an issue in this world. <laughs> It would be exciting, Griff guy. It would, it would, it would be very interesting. Um, she figured out that when she like she chatters her teeth, it's like it's worse than fingernails on chalkboard for me. People grinding their teeth, I just, I, I, I can't do it. I just, I cannot mm -hmm. do it. The guinea pig started doing it. When like he's like, I don't want, I don't want to stay with you. I'm like, ah, I like you. Yeah, ah. Just get the guinea pig, offspring. Just get the guinea pig and just go. So yeah, I do. I live in southern Arizona. So with my rheumatoid arthritis, I need the heat. It is even in like the midst of July, when everybody else is like, I'm not stepping foot outside today. If I need to get something, it will be either delivered here or we will go through drive through We are not shutting off the car because if the car shuts off for more than three seconds, it immediately goes up to 150 degrees. I'm like, I would die. Let, let me go. Let me go run some care. Let, let me go run some errands. Let me go sit out in the sun. Just kind of soak it up like a little lizard. I'm good. I'm absolutely yeah, I, I would be dead. Us, us Wales people, we're, we're not built for uh, we're not built for anything above two degrees. Yeah, you would you would burst into flames here. Absolutely, Shilo's a good place. Um, so Shilo's a it's been through some stuff with like wildfires and stuff like that, but it's a it's a good small town. Um, what is one hundred and fifty degrees? Because I mean, like people here. I mean, some idiots get the really expensive rims. Most of the time, people are getting covers for the dash, like not like the, the very top of the dash of your car because mm. that just gets fried, absolutely fried by, by the sun um, and window tinting galore. But the state of Arizona restricts it to like a certain amount. Um, you can't do the front at all. Um, cause of course you shouldn't be tinting the front windshield. Um, but then even the sides in the back can only be to a certain level. So many people tint their windows way too dark. I can't blame them because, you know, the outside of the car will go forever in the desert. There's nothing here that really destroys it. The interior, the sun will just bake it. Anything vinyl, anything plastic, just absolutely. And anything Welsh. <laughs> All right. What is 150 degrees Celsius or 150 degrees Fahrenheit, excuse me, to Celsius? It's just 65 degrees, Mark. No, no never happening. I don't, I mean, Fridays with Frank. I. I, I once I was on exercise once, um, mm -hmm. in thirty four degrees. That sounds that sounds good to me. Celsius, and um, if it was one more degree, they would have to have called it off. We have had Sky Harbor Airport in Phoenix have to shut down because. Tires of airplanes were melting, and 
Yeah. I don't, I don't know what that is in the. In Phoenix is in Phoenix studios. is like the hotter part of the state, though, because it's like all concrete and all reflected heat. They're re, they're mm. stupid in there with the, you know, not having, um, you know, zero scaping um, with like you know. Not so um, long ago, they did um, they did selection for the SAS. Mm-hmm. And um, it was about that same temperature, and uh, a few, I think two or three of them died during wow. selection. Um, so, so yeah, uh, over here, over here, it's it's we have a weird heat, and it's it always it always feels a lot hotter here than it does than it does there. There's science behind it, but I can't remember what science is. So. Yeah. There's YouTube videos about it. Sure yeah. I, but we don't have the humidity because the humidity kills me. Fridays we have Friday a lot of that. is in Pinal County, which is north of us. Seriously, mm. I want to, like, it, it, Pinal County is basically between us and Phoenix. I, I would not mind getting pulled over by him. Hopefully not for, like, a stupid expensive ticket. But yes, I would absolutely like fangirl out on him. Um, yeah. Um, so Sue Bear's heading off, which I, hey, it's been an hour and a half, guys. It's been an hour and a half. I lasted an hour and a half. My eyebrow is like, start, I'm starting to feel my pulse in it, which means <laughs> what I probably need to do is go lie down and, and hydrate because once the snot gets locked up there, bad things happen. We don't mm-hmm. like green snot. We don't like that. Um, but I, it does. It does. I swear though, the humidity is just the killer for me. If it is dry, I don't care how hot it how hot it gets. My body's just like, bring me more. Bring me more. I am the heat miser. I just need to get the hair. All right. Thank you guys. Thank you guys for coming. Um, I am hopeful that I can reconnect with Mav and we can do some more fun with him. Um, I'm sure he will give me absolute crap about what a wuss I am, which is valid. It's valid. Um, thank you guys for coming and we shall see you all again. Let's see if I remember which button to push. <laughs> push the Bye. button. Push Bye. The button.